championship debut went forward in a team that contains four championship debutants in total. It's an interesting first 15 selected by manager Michael O'Grady and his fellow selectors. Cornerback Sean Dyglin returns to the cornerback position in a back six that sees the goalkeeper Brendan McLaughlin's brother David get the number seven jersey for the first time. The midfield area will be crucial for the Metropolitans and they have pinned their hopes on the Michael Fitzsimons and Dave Sweeney partnership. Good forwards are an essential prerequisite for championship success. And here Dublin may not have household names, but the potential is huge. For Conor McCann at full forward is surrounded by talent of the calibre of Liam Ryan and Tommy McGrain. Hurling fans, not just Wexfords, will be delighted to see the return of Liam Dunn to the Slaney Siders defence after breaking his leg in a club match in October 97. His role is vital now, for Wexford are missing four key players, two of them in defence. This then is manager Rory Kinsella's first team selection for the championship. In the absence of Eugene Furlong and Rod Guiney, Colm Kyo and Declan Ruth fill the right flank of the Wexford defence, with Sean Flood and Larry O'Gorman on the other side. Adrian Fenlon has a new midfield partner in Rory McCarthy, and their experience in guile should supply plenty of possession for an attack that is led by championship debutant Dara Ryan. The full forward line looked quite intimidating. Tom Dempsey, Martin Storey and Michael Jordan. Well grabbed by Liam Ryan. Cutting through the centre. Good run by the centre half forward. Looks for a little bit of support as there. But the pass just a little bit too strong for Tomas McGray. McGrain under pressure. Good defending by Sean Flood. Here comes Joe Cush. Iron man from Gorey. Inspirational play by the fullback. Down to a very fit, agile looking Larry Murphy. Towards Martin Story. Picked up by Tom Dempsey. Wexford step up a gear and score a wonderful point. It's championship hurling in Nolan Park. And there we saw a flash of what Wexford are truly capable of. It started way down the field with Ger Cush grabbing the ball. At the other end, it was a well-taken point. Dublin under severe pressure here. Larry Murphy trying to get away from David McLaughlin. Larry Murphy tearing through the heart of the Wexford defence. Feeds the corner forward, Michael Jordan. drives by the Slaney Siders split open the Dublin defence within a minute of each other but credit here to Larry Murphy who fed Jordan who gave McLaughlin no chance good work by Paul Cott Tom Dempsey type of ball he loves to run onto and time and score Second point of the match for the corner forward in the Buffers Alley Cup. Showing his experience and guile. It's a lovely ball that Tom ran onto and then turned superbly, giving his opponent no chance. Well intercepted by Liam Walsh. Comes back to Dara Rye. Referee cleverly allows the advantage to develop. A well taken point by Adrian Fenlon. That's three points for the midfielder. And his role is becoming more and more prominent as the match progresses. This was good work by Dara Ryan. He did all the grafting here for Adrian Fenlon. But Fenlon got in a very good shot despite being well marked. High challenge on centre half forward Liam Ryan which will win the Metropolitans a free. Tommy McGrain flings this over the bar. As Wexford initiates another move. Falls nicely for the goal scorer, Michael Jordan who seeks another score, and he achieves it. Goal and a point for the Marshallstown man. Wexford fans reasonably satisfied. Yeah. 
Shane Ryan. Jarkush first to the ball. Not a good clearance. Comes back, however, to David Sweeney, who registers Dublin's first score of the second half. Well, the large crowd here in Nolan Park not really responding to the exchanges. And it's hard to blame them because primarily it's been uh, just a display of Wexford's repertoire of skills. But despite that, Dublin's still capable of turning the tide. They need a score. Here's the pull forward, Conor McCann. And that's a second Dublin point within a moment or two. Four and a half minutes gone in the second half. Two quick points by Dublin. Bring them realistically in with a real chance. Here's this ball into Conor McCann. Turned inside Jerkush for once and took his point. Nicely latched on to by Shane Martin. There's a chance here of a goal. Good defending by Wexford. They still have it. It's down to him in Henry And Wexford defend admirably. But they're still there, Dublin, with a chance, and that's gone out harmlessly wide. But just for a moment there, Conor McCann and Dublin were showing real potential. Potential to score a goal. Here it is again. As Dublin seemed to have found the way, well blocked, however, by the Wexford defence. Try to feed Michael Jordan. Nice scale by the corner forward. Nipping away, David McLaughlin, well cut out, however, by John Finnegan. Rory McCarthy backing it down for the left half forward, Paul Codd. And the first point for Wexford of the second half has now been scored. His second point of the match. It's 1-10 now to six points. Michael O'Grady looking very concerned. Kevin Flynn did well to keep it in. Rory McCarthy knocks it down. Only comes far as Michael Fitzsimons, who sends it very efficiently back and over the bar. They stay in touch. Six points between the teams. One senses that to Wexford have relaxed considerably and just finding it difficult to get their game up a gear. And Dublin are showing tremendous pride. Back to Martin Story. Pass from Larry Murphy. Story with poor Dublin players chasing after him. Gets his first point of the match. This was good play by Larry Murphy, but just watch four Dublin players chasing after Martin Storey. None of them could catch him. Miscued by Sean Power. Martin Storey. Hit by a shoulder. That literally flattened him. But to Storey's credit, he continued on and scored his points. But the referee, meanwhile, is speaking to the Dublin defender and undoubtedly in trouble here could be Sean Dignan it increases Wexford's tally but it's a yellow card for the Dublin number four here's Martin's story now keep an eye for number four coming in there was a full frontal charge and that was a bookable offence well apart from that blitz um, in the early quarter of this championship match by Wexford this is very much a match that is quite easily forgotten about. Larry O'Gorman. Good intelligent ball over towards Paul Codd. Dancing his way past three Dublin defenders and putting it over the bar. Three points for Wexford. And Barry O'Sullivan being spoken to by the match referee for that challenge on the Wexford captain. 
Here's Paul Codd. Dancing by one challenge. Two. Here comes the third. And Barry O'Sullivan continued on. This is uh, the instant again. You can see the challenge there coming through. It was quite low, if not deliberate, by Barry O'Sullivan. Barry O'Sullivan now operating at midfield. And Dara Spain back centre back. Here's a good run by David Sweeney. Which results in his second point of the match. And Dublin now have eight points on the scoreboard. Dublin introducing Niall Butler from the Kilmercud Croaks in Stillorgan. He's coming on to the Dublin attack. And looks like Connor McCann is coming off. Oh, beautiful to watch. Larry O'Gorman. It's unfortunate that he was hooked because everything else was so gorgeous to watch. Sean Flood was taking too many steps. Referee Pat O'Connor is getting some boos, which is probably about the only excitement we've had in this uh, second half. And this free going to be taken. And Dublin, I'm sure, perhaps just might think about going for a goal. Takes his point. So that gives you the scoreline. 113 to 9 points. Paul Cott. Adrian Fenner. Now comes the long ball. Eamon Scallop. Dublin try again. Marking very poor now. Now Butler going for the point. And still organ man has registered Dublin's 10th point of the game. Almost 30 minutes gone now in the second half. And amazingly, the Wexford boys managing just four points in that period. And if Dublin had any ideas up front, despite being dominated, they could well produce a shock. But it's highly unlikely due to a lack of uh, creativity. This is a free in. Kevin Flynn's Hurley was being fouled, being held, and that's going to be another chance for Dublin to get a little bit closer. Tomas McGrain going to take it. Already, already a scorer of four points. Difficult angle, and he did well. Tommy McGrain's fifth point of the match. And amazingly, Dublin are really in with a chance. Oh, great run by Larry Murphy, flicking it to Martin Story. Oh, great defending in turn by Dublin. And again, Larry O'Gorman leaves it behind him. There's a chance here for Dublin, perhaps. Larry O'Gorman without a hurley, gives it outside, a chance of a goal. He has to turn and shoot, and a goal for Dublin. Emmett Carroll from Ballyboat in St. Enders. And amazingly, this Wexford team has fallen asleep and Dublin outplayed, outmaneuvered, at times indeed showed their lack of skill, but there's no doubt about it. Dublin have showed tremendous passion and self-belief. And Wexford now have to respond. Adrian Fenlon leaving it for David McLaughlin. Outside towards Liam Walsh as Dublin come in pursuit of more scores. Less than a minute left, brilliantly cut. They need a point here to have any chance of levelling this game, and there's another point. Scored by Kevin Flynn. Now Nolan Park is alive. If Wexford lose this, they have only themselves to blame. If Michael O'Grady pulls this out of the fire, it is a tremendous boost for Dublin Hurling. The substitutes for Dublin have certainly worked. Half locked down. It's a race for Kevin Flynn, who's well able to score. Joe Cush, Baffett, under pressure. 
doesn't deliver a clearance clearly. Comes back to a Dublin man who's sending it wide. Anxiety in the Dublin camp. Hits it low. Comes straight towards midfielder David Sweeney. Score two points himself. The ball dropping inside. Well gathered by the Wexford defender. Comes out far as Rory McCarthy. Spreads it out to the far over wing. Larry Murphy not quite expecting it. Now he's there. Sending it down. Half blocked. Underneath it is Paul Codd. Hand passing it almost unintentionally to Tom Dempsey. Gathered by Brendan McLaughlin. How much time is left? We now have a minute and 38 seconds played. And it's all over for Dublin. And Wexford scraped through. It's Wexford's day. Dublin's day not far away. Full time score, 113 for the Slaney Siders, 112 for Dublin. At the end of the day we're out of the championship and our next match is November, so you're welcome to come to that match. But most of the people don't come to matches in November and I, I can't blame them. So um, that's it, a long summer for Dublin but no more hurling. Do you think that they proved that Dublin hurling is alive and well? Well, they proved to me, but I knew it the whole time. Uh, I'm not sure about the media, they will never believe. They are as fickle as the weather in Ireland. If we have one good game, they'll write us up. If we have a bad game, they'll put us down. We got a terrible trouncing in the media all during the week. Um, hidings, and they were referring back to last year. I thought last year was all over and done with, you know, and, but it wasn't seemingly. We tried to keep our composure during the time, tried to train, tried to believe in ourselves, believe that we had a chance coming down here. And as it worked out, we had a very big chance. And I suppose at the end, a young team, not believing in themselves, rushing the clearances, 15 wides is too many win a championship. But a very, very good finish. I'm very proud of the team for finishing so strongly. They're a very young team and they'll be heard of in the future. Let me go back to the media because when you came out of the Dublin dressing room, uh, some of my colleagues in the print media were there. You seem to be quite angry. Uh, does it hurt when you're written off uh, pre-championship? It hurts big time when people write up how the game of hurling, who don't know the game of hurling. They obviously didn't watch us in the league when we played some good games. We had a good game against Limerick, good game against Clare, not bad against Galway. You have to give them away two very soft goals. So yeah, I'm very annoyed because the, the, the general person, the public, believes the media, you know, and we're trying to instill belief in a team. We haven't won a Leinster Championship in nine years, with the exception of nine, uh, 1997, we won Betway Smead. So it's very hard, and it's all about belief. And I believe the 30 players in the field, there isn't much in the difference. Wexford had the belief, we haven't it. And uh, last year the media did us damage by building us up. And this year they tried to build us down. So I'm not sure, I suppose the media, they must write to, to make their money. But it's difficult when you're, when you're um, a team that's struggling to make the top. Yeah, so Michael O'Grady feeling that Dublin have not been given a sympathetic hearing by the press. But at the end of the day, it's Wexford who march on to the next round of the championship and a meeting with the All-Ireland champions Offaly on June 20th. And that's a game you can see live here on RTE television. Peter Finnerty, does Michael O'Grady have a point? He has a point, I suppose, in one sense. You have to think of when this interview was given. It was given immediately after they'd been knocked out of the championship.